Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stephanie and I appreciate y'all stopping by. Today I'll be showing y'all how I made these 10 easy fall themed decor pieces for my tiered tray using items from Dollar Tree, Hobby Lobby, and Target's Dollar Spot. I hope y'all enjoy the video and if you do, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We're at almost 10,000 subscribers, so I'll be having a fun little giveaway soon to celebrate because without all of your love and support, I wouldn't be here on YouTube doing what I love to do. So a huge thank you to each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. Let's go ahead and jump into the first DIY. For this first project, I used two of these mini wood palettes from Dollar Tree. I started by using Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin to paint the fronts and backs of both palettes. Once I had the palettes painted, I took a sanding sponge and some sandpaper and used them to distress all the edges of both palettes, making sure to sand the top and bottom of each of the wooden slats so that some of the raw wood would be showing. I also lightly sanded over the rest of the paint just to lighten it up and age it a little bit as well. Next, I used hot glue to attach the two palettes together with the side with the most slats facing outwards. Then I took one of these little pieces of wood from Dollar Tree and used hot glue to attach it to the top of the palette for the stem of the pumpkin. Next, I took one of the leaves off of the pumpkin filler pick from Dollar Tree, cut the stem down just a little bit, and then used hot glue to attach it to the inside of the top of the back palette. I then took three pieces of raffia and tied it around the bottom of the stem to cover up where the wood was glued to the palette and cut off the excess. I also went ahead and added a little bit of hot glue on the back side of the stem and pushed the raffia down so that it would cover up the gap between the palette and the stem on the back side of the pumpkin. To finish up this project, I took three more pieces of raffia and tied a simple shoestring bow and hot glued it to the stem and trimmed off the excess raffia. And that's it for this simple little rustic palette pumpkin. I really love how this one turned out. Moving right along to DIY number two. For the second DIY, I started with one of these wooden laser cut foxes that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I took Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin and painted all the areas on the fox that needed to be orange. I only painted the front side of the fox since I would be gluing it down and the back will not be seen. I want to apologize, I somehow managed to lose some of the footage of painting the fox, but after the orange paint was dry, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory to paint all the areas on the fox that were white. Then I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to paint the fox's eyes and nose. Next, I used one of the mini wooden cutting boards from Hobby Lobby that I picked up for 50% off and used hot glue to attach the fox to the middle of the cutting board and this one's finished. If you wanted a more secure hold, you could use wood glue or E6000 to attach the fox to the cutting board. I think this little cutting board turned out adorable. I wanted to keep it simple, so I chose not to add anything else to it. I want to take a few seconds here to mention that today's video is part of a fall inspiration collaboration with my dear friend Amanda from Six Kids and a Glue Gun. Here is a quick sneak peek at the gorgeous DIYs and inspiration she has for y'all today over on her channel. I will leave a link in the description box below so you can go check out her video. If you haven't checked out Amanda's channel before now, I highly recommend doing so. Y'all won't be disappointed. She is incredibly creative and just as talented, not to mention she is one of the sweetest people you'll ever meet. So please check out her channel when you finish this video and tell her I sent you over. If this is your first time on my channel, I want to send out a great big warm welcome and I hope you are enjoying this video and if you are and would like to see more, please be sure to hit that like button as well as the subscribe button. All right, let's move on to DIY number three. For this project, I used eight of these oval-shaped shower curtain rings from Walmart and some Just Yarn Plus Yarn in the color Creme Brulee from Dollar Tree. I started by making sure the shower curtain ring was snapped closed, then using a small dab of hot glue, started wrapping the yarn around the ring using hot glue to tack it in place as needed. 
This yarn is pretty thin, so I figured out it was much easier to wrap it around the ring several times, then scrunch it up tight against the yarn I had already wrapped so that it would be nice and full. Once I came to the end of one piece of yarn, I scrunched it up as tight as I could against the other yarn and then used a dab of hot glue to hold the end in place and started another piece of yarn to continue wrapping the rest of the ring. When I had the entire ring wrapped and was back to where the shower ring snapped together, I used some hot glue to secure the yarn in place on the inside of the ring and cut off any excess yarn. I then repeated this step to completely wrap all eight shower curtain rings. To put the pumpkin together, I made sure that the flattest area of the rings, which is where they snapped together, was facing one another to create the center of the pumpkin and used hot glue to attach the two rings together. I then continued to attach the other rings to the first two using hot glue to secure them in place. I glued the rings onto the pumpkin so that they were opposite of each other. So if I glued one on the front side, I would then glue the other directly across from it on the back side. I continued to repeat this step until I had all eight rings connected and a shape of a pumpkin. I will say that if I were to redo this project, I would probably only add six of the shower curtain rings instead of the eight. Once I had all the rings glued together, I took another piece of yarn and tied it tightly around the center of the pumpkin for a little added security and then reshaped the pumpkin. Then I took another one of the wood pieces from Dollar Tree and hot glued it to the top center of the pumpkin for the stem. I also took another leaf off the pumpkin filler pick and hot glued it to the top of the pumpkin as well. Then to finish up this project, I took some brown paper wrapped floral wire and wrapped it around a sharpie to create a tendril and used hot glue to attach it to the top of the pumpkin opposite the leaf. I think this one turned out super cute and I also think the round shower curtain rings from Dollar Tree would make a cute little pumpkin as well. I just like the shape of these oval ones from Walmart. Moving right along to DIY number four. For this project, I used three of these small straw bells and four of these chalkboard tag clothespins all from Dollar Tree. I started by removing the clothespins from the back of the chalkboard tags. I then used some sandpaper to sand the front and back of each of these tags. Once I had the tags sanded, I painted the front and back of all four tags with a light coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory. I did want some of the black from the chalkboard to show through the paint. Next, I took some Rust-Oleum stain in the color Kona and a small coarse paintbrush and lightly painted the stain on the front and back of all four tags. I did each tag just a little bit different and I used more stain in some places so that they would look more natural. I used my Cricut to cut out the words apples, hot cider, hay rides, and pumpkins in black vinyl and placed one on each of the four tags. You could also use stickers, transfers, or freehand these words if you don't have a vinyl machine. To create the sticks for the four signs, I used one of these large skewer sticks from Dollar Tree. I cut four pieces from the skewer stick all at different lengths so that the signs would be at varying heights. Once I had all four pieces cut, I stained them with the Kona stain. Then after the stain was dry, I used hot glue to attach one to each of the signs. I went ahead and cut four smaller pieces of the same skewer and placed one in each corner on the bottom of one of the straw bales. When I had the skewer sticks in place, I placed the other two straw bales together on the bottom and placed the bell with the skewer pieces on top and pushed it down into the bottom two bales to create a stack. I used some hot glue on the bottom of the top bale and between the two bottom bales to give a little added security to help hold them together. Then to finish off this quick little project, I placed one of the signs on top of each of the three bales and then the apple sign between the two bottom bales. 
I think this little straw bale stack turned out really cute. I placed some small pumpkins from Dollar Tree on top of the bales once it was on the tiered tray to add a little more decoration and to make it the focal point on the top tier of the tray. Let's move on to DIY number five. For this next project, I used one of these double-sided wooden chalkboard easels from Dollar Tree. I started by staining the frame on both sides with Kona wood stain. I used Cricut Design Space to create this fresh pressed hot apple cider image and cut it out in matte white vinyl and placed it on one side of the chalkboard. You can still do this project without a vinyl machine by using stickers, freehanding the image, or using carbon paper or pencil to transfer the image onto the chalkboard and using a paint marker to fill it in. I made another design for fresh baked pumpkin pie and cut it out in some matte white vinyl and placed it on the other side of the easel and that finishes up this quick little project. I really love the way this one turned out. It really reminds me of going to the pumpkin patch and the little chalkboard signs outside the concession stands. If you know how to share these images from Cricut Design Space, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to share these with you guys in case you want to make this. Let's go ahead and move into DIY number six. For this project, I started with this wooden decor piece that I picked up on clearance at Hobby Lobby. I used some sandpaper and a little bit of elbow grease to sand off the word from the front. Once I had removed the word, I used Kona wood stain to stain everything but the wooden beads. Next, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory and painted the wooden beads with about three good coats, letting them dry well between each one. Then I took one of these squirrel-shaped chalkboard ornaments from Dollar Tree and painted it with two coats of apple barrel paint in the color nutmeg brown. I'd use some Just Yarn Plus Yarn in the color brown from Dollar Tree to give the little squirrel some fur. I started at the tip of the tail and applied a thin layer of hot glue along the edges and put the yarn on top of the glue. I used the tip of a skewer stick to place the yarn onto the glue to keep it from burning my fingers and to help get the yarn in the right place. I then continued putting down the hot glue and yarn until the entire squirrel was outlined. After I had the outline of the squirrel done, I started filling in the inside with more yarn until it was completely covered. Once I had the squirrel completely covered, I used some small detailed scissors to cut the excess yarn from around the ears, hand, tail, foot, and contours of the body to define the shape a little more. I then took these wooden harvest words from Dollar Tree and picked out the one that said Hello Autumn and painted the front of it with one light coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. I applied some hot glue on the back of the words and placed them on the right side of the wooden sign. Then to finish off this sign, I placed a generous amount of hot glue on the back of the little squirrel and placed it on the left side of the sign and that's it for this one. I am really thrilled with how this one turned out. I think it's probably my favorite out of all of today's projects. Moving right along to DIY number seven. For this project, I used one of these new fall book stack decor pieces from Dollar Tree. I started by removing the bow and paper from the book stack. I used a damp sponge to rub off all the paper and set it aside to completely dry. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin to paint the top book in the stack as well as the top of the book stack. Next, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color hazelnut to paint the middle book. Then I used Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson to paint the bottom book and bottom of the book stack. Using my Cricut, I cut out the word pumpkins in white vinyl and applied it to the right side of the orange book. But you could use stickers, stamps, stencils, or even freehand these words if you don't have a vinyl machine. Next, I cut out the word hay rides in white vinyl and applied it to the brown book. And finally, I cut out the word apples in white vinyl and applied it to the red book. I took four pieces of raffia and applied some hot glue to the bottom left side of the red book and glued the raffia in place. I then wrapped the raffia around the front and top of the book stack and hot glued it to the back of the book stack to secure it in place and trimmed off the excess. 
Then to finish off this book stack, I took three more pieces of raffia and made a simple shoestring bow and hot glued it to the top right side of the book stack. And that's it for this quick and easy fall book stack. I think it turned out great, and best of all, it only cost $1.25 using this decor piece from Dollar Tree. Alright, on to DIY number 8. For this simple project, I used one of these large styrofoam balls from Dollar Tree. I started by using a scraper and cut the styrofoam ball in half. Next, I used some small, leaf-shaped fall confetti that I picked up 50% off at Hobby Lobby. I separated out the three colors of leaves and began gluing them all over the top of the styrofoam ball, alternating colors until all of the styrofoam was covered. I did add some hot glue on the ends of some of the leaves so that they would lay flat, but I left some of the others sticking up so that it would look more organic. Then I took one of these chalkboard wooden stakes from Dollar Tree and cut the stake down so that it would fit in the leaf pile. Then, using my Cricut, I cut out the phrase, Go Jump in the Leaves, out of a matte white vinyl and applied it to the front of the chalkboard sign. Again, some small stickers would work or a chalk marker if you don't have a vinyl machine. Then, to finish off this project, I stuck the sign down into the leaves and that was it. I think this turned out absolutely adorable and it really reminds me of my childhood in the fall. I decided to use this as a mug topper for a small orange mug that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Quickly moving on to DIY number 9. For this next project, I used one of these 2.357 inch terracotta pots from Hobby Lobby. First, I wrapped the bottom half of the pot with some twine, starting right under the lip using hot glue to secure it in place. I used some twine that I picked up at Walmart, but Dollar Tree does carry twine in both their Crafter Square department and their hardware department. Once I had the bottom half of the pot completely wrapped with the twine, I took a candle lighter and very carefully burned off all the fuzzies. This is optional, but I really do like the rustic look it gives to the twine. To cover the top half of the pot, I used these skinny sticks from Walmart. I started by measuring out one of the sticks to see how long I wanted them to be around the top of the pot and marked it with a pencil. I used a pair of miter shears to cut the stick to size. I then used that piece to measure out the rest of the pieces and cut them using the miter shears, but scissors will cut these sticks as well. I ended up cutting roughly five of the skinny sticks into pieces and only had two pieces left over. After I had all the pieces cut, I used hot glue to attach them all the way around the top of the pot. Once I had all the pieces glued onto the pot, I used Kona wood stain to stain the pieces. I did end up doing two coats of stain and made sure to stain the wood on the inside of the pot to match the outside. Then after the stain was dry, I took some more twine and hot glued it once around the very bottom of the wood to hide the jagged edges and to give it a more finished look. I also went ahead and hot glued some of the twine around the top of the pot on the inside to hide the gap in the glue from where the wood was hot glued onto the pot. Again, I burned off all the fuzzies from the twine. Next, I took a package of these wooden acorns from Dollar Tree and painted the caps with a coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color hazelnut. I then used apple barrel paint in the color nutmeg brown to paint the body of the acorn with two light coats. Since I was planning on putting some scented chips in the pot, I used some hot glue on the bottom and inside the bottom to fill up the hole. I took this pumpkin spice scented sachet and opened it up and poured some of the chips into the bottom of the pot. Next, I took some of the leaf confetti left over from the last project and placed some down into the pot. Then to finish off this project, I added the wooden acorns and a few more leaves. I really like how this little acorn potpourri bucket turned out and it smells absolutely amazing. And last but certainly not least, DIY number 10. For this last project, I used one of these wooden apples from the Target Dollar Spot. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color crimson and painted the front and sides of the apple making sure not to paint the stem. It did end up taking two coats to fully cover up the green. Next, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle to paint the front and sides of the stem with two good coats. 
Then to finish off this quick and easy project, I took three pieces of raffia and tied a simple shoestring bow and hot glued it to the bottom of the stem and that's it for this one. I hesitate to call this one a DIY. It's more of a makeover, I guess, but I think it turned out super cute and it matches my tiered tray decor much better now. Here is one final look at all of today's fall tiered tray DIYs. I am absolutely thrilled with how all of these turned out and I love how they look on my tiered tray. I wanted to keep the theme of this tiered tray more so a rustic woodland theme, but if you have any specific requests for a fall themed tiered tray, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can come up with. I actually have another tiered tray that I need to decorate for fall. I'm thinking maybe a football theme since we're a huge college football fan family. Also, if you're interested in how I made my tiered trays, I will link the video in the description box as well as on the end screen to this video. Which one of these projects is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Mine has to be the Hello Autumn sign with the little squirrel. I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by today, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out here on YouTube, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Click that button and stick around for a little while. I have tons of fun projects on the way. Also, don't forget to go check out Amanda's video and channel, both of which will be linked in the description box below. I'll see y'all next time.